Hi, welcome to the Origami Workshop. My name is Vicki Mihar Avery, and I'm here to introduce you to the secret language of origami. A valley fold is usually the first step you'll take in origami. And it's simply bringing two edges together and making your crease. I usually start out pressing from the center and out. And the resulting fold, it's like looking down into a valley. The diagram shows a line of dashes where you will fold. The arrow will show the direction the paper should go. A mountain fold indicates a flap that is folded backwards. The crease looks like a mountain peak. So if we want to put a mountain crease across the center here, oftentimes you can flip your paper over, make your valley fold crease, and when you turn it over, you have a mountain peak. The diagram shows a line of dashes and dots where you will fold. The arrow that shows the direction the paper should go has a half arrow head. A crease is simply a fold that you make and then unfold. It can be either a valley or a mountain. So here's my valley fold crease. Once you make your crease, you open it back up, it results in a crease that you can see. Same thing with a mountain fold. It's fold and open up. And there's your crease. The diagram shows a bouncing arrow, or sometimes it's a double-headed arrow. When you look ahead to the next diagram, you'll see a solid line where you've made the crease. A squash fold is exactly what it sounds like. We do a lot of these in origami. And it's taking a flap, and you want to squash it open. Separate the layers and run your finger up and down the spine inside in order to open up the pocket. And then you're going to squash or press this flap down, making sure you line the center crease up nicely. And then press your flap down. That's a squash fold. Let me show you a squash fold using a triangle shaped flap. Here we have our flap. We're going to open up and Run our finger inside, and then press this top layer down flat, making sure the edges are nicely lined up. The diagram for a squash fold will show a large arrowhead that means push here. The top layer will have a mountain fold line, and the layer underneath will show a valley fold line. The flip over arrow is simple, but it's easy to miss because it's placed between two steps. You just simply flip the model over like a pancake. Look for the flip over arrow. It is a looping arrow that you will find between diagram steps. The rotate arrows are arranged in a circle and you will spin or rotate the model. The rotate arrows are arranged in a circle. Look ahead to the next step so you can see where you want to end up. Inside reverse fold, we're going to make a pre-crease and open it back up again. And we want to reverse this point to the inside. So I'm going to press this down and reverse this crease. This mountain crease will reverse to a valley fold. You pinch it. And this is an inside reverse fold. Let's break it down into several steps. The first, let's pre-crease by folding the top edge down. Then we're going to crease sharply and unfold. Move the flap in the direction of the arrow to the right. Now partially unfold the entire model so you can see all the creases you have. The solid push here arrow is pointing to the flap that you will push inward to make your inside reverse fold. We're going to reverse two of these creases. 
the bottom crease will change from a valley to a mountain fold, and the center crease will change from a mountain to a valley fold. Let me show it to you. More commonly, you see this to make a bird beak. So we're going to make this an inside reverse fold. And we can simply press this down, and we're reversing this crease, which is a mountain. It will become a valley by pinching. And we have our inside reverse fold. The arrow shows that the tip needs to go inside. Also look for the mountain fold line on top and the valley fold line underneath. In origami, there is a lot of symmetry. What you do for one side, you often do for the other. I'm going to show you an example of what we call turn and repeat. Here I have my preliminary or square base with two flaps on the right side and two flaps on the left. And I want to place a squash fold on each one of these flaps. So let's start with the first flap on this right side. I'm going to reach in and squash this down. And now we end up with just one flap on the right, and we have two more on the left. So let's turn, and we're going to repeat on this back side. I'm going to take this extra flap here on the right, bring it across, and that will let me squash it down. And we have two more flaps to repeat. So let's turn this page. We're going to turn and fold this page down flat, and we're going to repeat on this flap. You can now squash this one down. And I have one more flap to squash. So let's turn the entire model over. I'm going to turn this page and repeat the squash on this last flap. And now we have accomplished all four squashes. We have four pages on the right and four pages on the left. Turn and repeat is often shown with an arrow and a line across the arrow indicating how many times you need to repeat. An arrow with a puffy cloud on the end points to the place you need to blow into in order to puff up your model. The inflate here arrow will show that you need to open up your model. And in this case, we just need to insert our fingers opening up this tulip shape and turning it around using our fingers to square off the bottom. And we have completely opened up our model. So with our square sheet of paper, we're going to start it flipped over so the white side is up. Bring this bottom edge up to the top. We're folding this in half into a rectangle. So line it up along the top edges and at the corners. Start our fold right here in the center. Press out. Start here in the center and press out. This gives you a very straight crease. Now we have a rectangle that we want to fold in half. So bring this edge close to you, up to the top, line it up, match up the corners and the entire length of the edge. Start your fold right here in the middle and press out. Same for the other side, press out. Let's unfold this section right here. And if you take a look, this crease right here in the center, we call this a valley fold crease. It looks like you're looking down into a valley. So let's turn our model 
so it looks like a long rectangle. And start with this bottom edge, from this bottom corner, up and line up the entire edge along this center line, holding a tiny triangle. It should match right up to the center line. Do the same for the other side. Bring this corner up and press that down into a small triangle. Pay attention right here in the center. The edges don't overlap each other. You want them to be seated right next to each other. So we're doing the same thing for the other side. Just rotate the model and bring this bottom corner up. Line this up along the center line. Repeat the same for the other side. Bring this corner up and over, matching it up in the center and pressing it down. Now we fold it all four corners and turn our model so it looks like this with the two triangle sections on either side. Let's fold this back in half right along the center crease, the valley fold crease. Fold the whole thing right in half. Our next step is to put in a small pinch. It's not a full fold. So if you watch what I'm going to do, we're going to take this edge bring it up to the top and just pinch right here in the center. Not a big crease, just a little pinch right here in the middle. And then let it go and open it back up. You'll have the pinch right here in the center. Now we're almost done with our folding. What we want to do is shape our butterfly. So we need our two fingers, your like kind of like scissors. Grab on right in the center with your fingers, and you're going to bring the two flaps, which are the wings of our butterfly, fold it down, and you want the tips to match up right at the bottom, and then hold the paper under your finger, not too tightly, and hold it so that when you remove your finger, you have a tube. Now if you take a look right here in the center, you can find that pinch that we made a little earlier. So if you kind of push on it right there, you make a little dimple. Now with your right hand, you're going to grab each end of the tube, you give it a good pinch. You see that, how it collapses? Kind of looks like a fortune cookie. Let go your, with your other hand, and this is where the magic begins. Squeeze it really tightly and we have our flapping magic butterfly.